Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani and welcome back to this YouTube channel that takes on all kinds of topics related to narcissism, narcissistic abuse, narcissistic relationships, and just toxic people in general. It's my hope that this channel will help you cope, heal, and make sense of these patterns to help you navigate these issues in your relationships, your family, and in your workplace. So let's add to that proverb series because I think having those proverbs just end up becoming pithy ways of getting to the truth. Today's proverb, blood is thicker than water. You've all heard this one. Some of you may even believe it. Probably more than some of you believe this. The origins of this proverb go back to the 1100s. It was in German manuscripts and the initial translation really spoke to family loyalty. That family commitments or relationships would have to take precedence over the bonds of romantic love or friendships. Now, I actually think this proverb that blood is thicker than water is sort of an, an enable proverb that is often used in narcissistic families. A sort of permanent get out of jail free card for family members to behave badly. But then after somebody behaves badly in a family, they can fall back on this idea of family loyalty as a be all end all. Now, if you come from a healthy, happy, close knit family, then this proverb may feel intuitive. Yeah, we always stick together and we got each other's back. Good for you. But for those who originate from narcissistic or otherwise abusive family systems, it gets very complicated very quickly. In some ways, the greater the pathology and the dysfunction of a family of origin, the more pathologically bonded a person can feel to the family system at large. And they're often drawn back by emotions, including to finally wanting to work it through, to be seen in their family system, finally get it right, win over those toxic family members, show them what you've done in your life and are doing, as well as sometimes feeling guilt if you were to actually set healthy boundaries in those systems. Some people feel that they cannot escape narcissistic family systems either physically because of necessity or guilt and the shame and the confusion that keeps them in psychologically because even if you move to the other side of the world, your family may still be in your head. You still hear their voices, their gaslighting voices, their mocking voices in so much of what you do. That isn't really family loyalty. That's family stuckness. But blood, the statement, the proverb, blood is thicker than water, is often used as a way to minimize, for example, to minimize, like for example, if you were to go and seek out a more supportive group of friends or something, if you finally create some distance from a narcissistic family, and let's say you perhaps decide to take your vacation or holidays, spend holidays with friends, or make more of almost a family structure with your friends, your family of origin may turn around and say to you, oh, those friends, they're telling you that you're so great, right? And all that, because you just need to hear that. But that's because they want something from you. They're working an angle. Blood is thicker than water. Your real family will always have your back. And that will confuse you. Because after a lifetime of being abused and invalidated and gaslighted by this family system, you're still able to be confused by your family of origin you may even buy the gaslighted nonsense your family is selling you and then start having doubts about the motives about the, the lovely systems of friends in which you have immersed yourself and then get sucked back into the toxic family system. Narcissistic family systems don't like to lose control. They don't like when you marry healthy people that help you foster boundaries. They don't like when you find friends who cheer you on and psychologically support you and encourage you. They don't like when you, they don't even like it when you succeed. These family systems are often designed to keep psychologically, people psychologically sort of imprisoned, to keep their sandbags on their balloons so they don't float away, always feeling not enough and off balance so they can keep controlling you. Now, given what I do for a living, I have actually always disliked this proverb because I think it really plays on guilt and misassumptions. And it gives a family carte blanche to behave badly and then fall back on a foolish proverb as a manipulation. Ah, oh, we'll have your back more than other people do, even though we've never had your back, but you can't say that. The other challenging aspect of this proverb is that for many people, it fosters a sense of grief. 
One of the massive psychological tolls of a narcissistic family of origin is the sense that you did not get to have that very human and necessary experience of a safe childhood or unconditional love or a sense of connection or having adults in your life who value your aspirations and celebrate you. There is grief at missing out on that very, very human experience and a grief that really coalesces in adulthood at the impact and the realization of not having had that, what was missed, and a rumination about how different your life could have been if your early family relationships had been healthy. And as an adult, if you had healthy relationships with your parents and were free of all of the anxiety that growing up in a narcissistic family system can give you. The grief over your own limiting beliefs about yourself, the grief over not having that blood tie to a system that has your back instead of a system that manipulates you and can, Im and can impact you every day. So when these kinds of statements are made, that blood is thicker than water, they double down on the grief and guilt and shame that so many people experience when they come from narcissistic family systems. Some people cope by creating healthy families of their own. Others cope by drawing together friends into what feels like the supportive and loving family they wanted. Others cope by creating other ventures and things in their life that have a social element. And that's not water. It's something far, far more healthy. It's authentic ties, and that may actually be thicker than blood. In my estimation, a healthy family system, your blood, would celebrate your friendships, your relationships, your successes at work, and your dreams, and would never fall back on a nonsensical proverb about blood and water, but instead always be a safe space for you to land and celebrate the good things in your life. So while it's lovely to believe that your family would always have your back, it's very painful when they don't. And it can really bring up isolation, grief, and shame, and perhaps families that really do work well, don't need to make this distinction. So falling back on this proverb, any family that feels like you have to say blood is thicker than water, may be protesting too much. Because if you have to say this out loud, the family probably doesn't work. Because in a healthy family system, people know that that system is there for them and doesn't get threatened because people have wonderful friendships and marriages and succeed. But in families that are manipulative and controlling, Falling back on easy proverbs like blood is thicker than water can often feel people stuck and controlled and never being able to access the unconditionally supportive spaces that they need to be able to succeed in their lives.